Hello, this is the position RNA viruses tutorial presented by the SHLD with reference the being got illustrated review of microbiology by Cynthia Cornelison, Bruce Fisher and Richard Harley. So here we're going to visualize positive strand RNA viruses. So we start by knowing the class of virus, the type of virus, which is going to be RNA virus. <clears throat> the RNA virus is going to be divided into two single stranded viruses and double stranded viruses. Under the single stranded RNA viruses, you have positive strand and you have negative strand. Positive strand, as I've said, these RNA viruses are from five prime to three prime direction. Now, in positive strand, you can have known envelope and you have envelope. All known envelope are equals are hydral, and enveloped are going to be considered in the next page. <clears throat> now, the known envelope we have the picona viride, and under the picona viride, we have the enterovirus, which consists of the coxsackie virus, echo virus, the enterovirus, and the polio virus. Now, in the, the, the still in the picona virus, you have the rhinoviruses. In the picona viruses, you have the hepatoviruses, like the, hepat the hepatitis A virus. Now, in the known envelope, still in the known envelope equals a hydral, you have another family, which is the cal calici VVD. And the calici VVD constitutes of the hepatitis E and the hepatitis E virus and the Norwalk virus. So continuing with the next and uh, now so we are finishing now with the known envelope um, positive stranded RNA virus. Now we go to the envelope positive stranded RNA virus. So on the envelope positive stranded RNA virus, we have the Togo Vride family, which is still equals a hydra in this case. So in the side the Togo Vride, we have the alpha virus, which is made up of this in the eastern and the western equine encephalitis virus and the venezuela equine encephalitis virus we have the um still in the door we, the, we have the ruby virus which is made up of rubella virus now the inside now the envelope envelope is also made up of the flavi vivide which is still equals a hydral inside the flavi vivide we have the flavi virus which is made up of the dengue fever the japanese encephalitis the St. Louis encephalitis, the tick bone encephalitis, the West Nile yellow fever viruses. Now we have also um, the hepat hepatitis virus is inside the flavi VD. And the next one we have the coronavirus, which is helical. And then inside the coronavirus, which is helical, among the envelope viruses, we have the, the coronavirus, we have the coronavirus. <coughs> So this is an example of the polio virus, which is a type of the picona virus family, subfamily. <clears throat> now, um, let's see now the clinical outcome of an infection with polio malitis, with polio virus. So now we need to know that the polio virus infection is going to result to 1% major illness, going to result to 4% minor illness and 95% no illness. 1% major illness is going to result to non paralytic poliomyelitis and paralytic poliomyelitis. So, you have in the major illnesses, you have non paralytic poliomyelitis where the symptoms are indistinguishable from aseptic meningitis caused by other enteroviruses. So, in this patient, you have in, this is just, in non paralytic poliomyelitis, just resemble like a um, in a patient with aseptic meningitis. In aseptic meningitis, you have a meningitis with a sterile um, 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 cerebrospinal fluid. That's why it's said to be aseptic. Now, we have <coughs> paralytic poliomyelitis also. With paralytic poliomyelitis, here we have um, mammosal paralysis, which is going to follow myalgia and asymmetric weakness. You can also have respiratory paralysis, may also occur, which can result to death. And now we have polio virus infection that also results to a minor illness like aborted poliomyelitis. It is minor non specific symptom of headache, sore throat, and nausea. Is it clear? This is abortive poliomyelitis symptom but in 4% of cases, and then in 95% of cases, polio, my, polio virus is going to cause no illnesses. <clears throat> Now, 
the next now is the central nervous system invasion of polio virus so how does it do so what occurs is that you have infection you have the primary viremia you have the secondary viremia and then later on after the primary part because of primary viremia is first going to enter the blood the first time and then it's going to pass through the reticular endothelial system that's the immune system so when it passes through the reticular endothelial system that consists of the liver the spleen the lymph nodes and the lymphatic tissue now it's going to penetrate now into the, the, the blood the second time for a secondary environment after escaping the immune system now from the second environment we have virus going to be shed some virus going to be shed in the physis because it needs to know that polio malaria is taken from the fecal oral wood is it clear so <clears throat> when it enters in blood we have, we have replication in the oral pharynx and the small intestine is going to cause a febrile illness which is going to result to meningitis meningitis is going to be in rare cases but most of the time in day three you have a febrile illness basically meningitis occurring in rare cases that is by day six and you may have paralysis by day eight is it clear why because when it enters it passes into your central nervous system and then it's going to affect the particular your, your nerve root is affecting the it's going to cause meningitis first before it causes paralysis so meningitis occur first before paralysis in the case of um <clears throat> in the case of polymeritis because the polio virus first passes your blood brain barrier and all the your blood spinal cord barrier and all that so when it passes the blood brain barrier causes meningitis then later on it passes now into your central nervous system to your your nerve root down your, your, your to your to the different um, um your your spinal horns is it clear so it goes to the anterior spinal horn to cause a flaccid paralysis. So generally, a patient is going to have a paralysis, but which is flaccid and not spastic. Is it clear? <coughs> so the next one we have pathogenesis of the common cold, showing stages from infection to recovery. So this is now what's going to happen during infection with the rhinovirus in feet. So this is now with common cold. So with common cold is mostly due to rhinoviruses. It's going to infect the, the mucosal tissue. So when you invert the mucosal tissue, we have virus adsorbed to the nasal epithelium. Then later on, the virus is going to replicate and shed, causing the spread of infection. Then antibodies and interferons facilitate the recovery and the infection and and the epithelium regenerate so in this type we need to know that in this type of viruses they, there is no need of far viremia is it clear because we need to know that there are two main type of viral infection there are viral infection which are systemic and the viral infection which are local is it clear the viral infection which are local do not require any um, primary and secondary viremia for it to um to, to occur in the body is it clear so for local viral infection it directly goes to the the site where it infects and then it causes the disease there is it clear so in this local viral infection you are never going to see things like fever you're never going to see things like headache you're never going to see things except the symptoms are treated directly with the local um with the local cause with the local um, 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 um cause of the disease is it clear so it's never going to be associated with a systemic spread of the virus to the general circulation. But things like varicella, which starts with a prodromal symptoms such as fever, headache, before the rashes appear, it needs to first do a, a, a viremia, a primary and secondary viremia, is it clear? before these symptoms appear. <coughs> So the primary varimia is the, the period of vol the prodromal symptoms. Primary varimia where you have headache, um, fever, you can have headache, you have fever, war and leaf are the no parties. Why secondary varimia now is a period now where the particular symptom of the disease appear, which is now the rash in the case of paper of um, of um, plan or in the case of varicella. So now, in this case, <clears throat> we have the time cause of hepatitis A. It's another virus involved here. But so in hepatitis A, we need to know that generally it is going to occur for less than six months because it's an acute infection. So you have an incubation period of one to four weeks. Then we have virus in physis. So you can shed the virus in physis from two weeks to six weeks. 
the virus detected in the biopsy, the liver biopsy, then we have virus in your blood in this time period and we have elevated serum liver. Is it clear? <clears throat> now Togo Toga VD we have alpha family, so alpha alpha virus. So what's the pathology of rubella virus which is among those in the alpha virus? Now we need to know that rubella is going to enter and infect your nasopharynx and your lungs just like varicella. The virus is going to spread to the lymph node and the reticular endothelial system to cause me in the case of a primary varemia. Now the virus is going to be carried in the blood and spread to the other tissue and skin in the case of a secondary environment and now you need to know that in that same time it's also going to be transported in primary women to the fetus is it clear without so it can cause now a congenital abnormality so we have a classical triad in case of congenital abnormality in um, in rubella where there is the eye there is a, the the ear and there is the heart in the eye you are going to have cataract or you can have glaucoma in ear you can have sensorineural deafness and then in the heart you have um, 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 patent ductus arteriosus so those are the three main things, the congenital triad of rubella. So it's a uh, congenital rubella syndrome. <clears throat> now, the next one is a global distribution of yellow fever and then fever. Now, yellow fever is one of the is one of the fever that was highly scared in the past. So that's why every time you want to travel from one country to another, you must have your vaccination card against yellow fever. Is it clear? So the, because it was a pandemic disease, so roughly 15,000 cases occur yearly in tropical region of South America and Africa. Is it clear? So we have symptoms um, include fever, headache, chills, vomiting. Is it clear? Occasionally you have jaundice. So you see that these symptoms are typically the same symptoms as hepatitis A. So you have the same symptoms and serious cases can also affect the liver and the kidney. So that is for yellow fever, just similar like hepatitis A, but just that the difference is that you are not going to see hepatitis A antibodies, no, you are not going to identify hepatitis A um, RNA, but you are instead going to the identify the yellow fever RNA at the place. So here we have dengue fever. In dengue fever, we have approximately 50 to 100 million. So it's a much more increase with dengue fever. We don't have yet a vaccine for dengue fever, but the vaccine for yellow fever has been present. That's why the case is only 15,000 yearly. Why in dengue fever, it can be 80 to 100 million cases that occur each year. And it's characterized by certain onset of fever, um, headache, um, severe malaria. Dengue fever may lead to shock and hemorrhagia we eat even dead is it clear so you can become so so dengue fever is one that's going to result to hypovolemic shock and causes you to have hemorrhages all through the body is it clear <clears throat> now what is the natural issue of the patient with hepatitis c usually hepatitis c do not usually cause um, um, acute hepatitis, but it's more going to cause chronic hepatitis. So let's see hepatitis C. Hepatitis C in 25% of cases, hepatitis C is going to be acute hepatitis, and in most of those acute hepatitis, going to their body is going to resolve on its own. That hepatitis on its own is it clear? Now in 75% of cases, going to be subclinical infection is not going to be seen. And now, among the 25% of the acute hepatitis, some of them are going to be converted to chronic hepatitis, which is going to be seen 10 to 15 years later. Is it clear? So, that chronic hepatitis may be is after 6 months. So, when you are 6 months after the infection that you say is chronic hepatitis, resolution may occur months. So, now, chronic hepatitis can be formed, can form cirrhosis or can form liver failure, can result to liver failure. In case of when it has resulted to cirrhosis, it can result to hepatocellular carcinoma in patient with cirrhosis. Is it clear? So it's patient that have cirrhosis that can result that it can result to hepatocellular carcinoma. So the two main um, hepatitis that can result to hepatocellular carcinoma is hepatitis B and hepatitis C. But in the case of hepatitis C, before you have hepatocellular carcinoma, you must first have cirrhosis. But in the case of hepatitis B, before you have hepatocellular carcinoma, it is not needed for you to have cirrhosis. So, 
et quand il concourait dans des péchés naves, et bien de ça, on a cassé nos mains. Usually, if it is O age, it is more of, et bien de C than B. And if it is young age, it is more of, et bien de B than C. Now, how do you treat hepatitis C? You see the percentage of patients showing virologic response. You see that interferon alone, the response is like this. And interferon um, riba, uh, and ribavirin is showing this response. So when you put them independently, you have a very small response. But if you put the interferon and ribavirin both together, is it clear? the response is going to be extremely high. In 40% of people, you are going to have the, a good response of the hepatitis C um, treatment. Now, what's the total number of chronic infection in the United States in hepatitis B? There is no chronic infection in hepatitis A. You need to know that even worldwide, there is no chronic infection in hepatitis A. The chronic infection in the United States of hepatitis B is less compared to hepatitis C, which is more. Now, in worldwide, it's more hepatitis B, which is high compared to hepatitis C. Now, the new infection per year, hepatitis A has increased, and hepatitis B is also high, but hepatitis C is very low. The vaccine available, there is a vaccine for hepatitis B, which is taken um, in child, in infancy and childhood, and there is a vaccine for hepatitis A, which is taken at the age of, ten, of 1 year and 10 years. And we have also most common nodes of transmission. Hepatitis A is fecal oral. Hepatitis B is sexual, and worldwide is also maternal to fetal. Is it clear? And then hepatitis C is IV drug user. So from here we have finished with all the tutorial in this section. So say thanks for your attention. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for our channel as you make.